G'day everybody, Patrick here, and today I'm going to be talking about note-taking strategies for AWS exams. The reason I'm making this video is because I posted a video yesterday about the AWS Solutions Architect Professional exam and my strategies for that exam, including preparation as well as exam strategies when taking the exam. One thing I didn't mention though, which I kind of wish I did mention, was my note-taking strategy when I was preparing for the exam. So that's what this video is about. Now this applies to all AWS exams, not just the AWS Solutions Architect professional exam. So first things first, the question is, should you be taking notes during the lectures that you're watching and, and all the content that you're studying for these exams? Um, should you be taking really extensive notes or just brief ones, etc.? So I'll tell you a bit about how I've handled this problem. I don't take notes unless I think I'm gonna forget something. I have uh, a few 200 page workbooks. They cost about $2. Just go down to your local office supplies shop. And I have a few four color pens. I really like the four color pens because then you can differentiate um, between, for example, I will write notes in a black pen or a blue pen, and then I'll come back and I'll make little uh, amendments in either green or red, for example. Uh, and you can also have black and blue uh, interchange between them if you're doing like diagrams versus notes on those diagrams, pointing arrows to things, etc. cetera. Um, so I like having a four color pen, that's quite helpful. Uh, and then the 200 page books are good. Um, I think the only time I've actually run out of pages in one of those books was when I was taking the AWS Solutions, Prof Solutions Architect Professional Exam. I wrote a lot of notes. That was across all three of the courses that I followed. Um, in most cases, you won't use them all, but they're basically free. I know save the trees, um, but I like to take notes uh, on a physical piece of paper uh, rather than taking them digitally. I think you remember it better that way. Um, and my, my rationale for taking notes is not so much that I'm gonna to return to those notes, though often I do return to those notes. It's more about the fact that it forces you to pay attention to the videos better when you're trying to distinguish what you should be noting versus what you shouldn't be noting. Um, and I definitely don't wanna write everything down unless it's an extremely dense video that I had no idea about before. Um, if it's something that I'm mostly familiar with, then I'll play the video nice and fast and I will, um, I'll just pause it when I wanna take notes on something that I wasn't quite as familiar with. A little bit of a comment on playing videos quickly. So I use a Chrome extension called Video Speed Controller. It is an amazing extension. You can use keyboard shortcuts to change the speed of any video. And this isn't just YouTube or just Udemy or any of these uh, video sites. It's anywhere that there's a video embedded on a web page at all. Um, and you can modify the speed of the video to be any uh, multiple of 0.1. So you can do uh, 1.9 times speed, you could do 0.7 times speed, you could do 4.8 times speed if you really wanted to. Um, there's actually no limit to it. So you could do 0.1 or you could do 12 times speed if you if you really wanted. The only real limit is your, your internet speed. Um, so I've found for me, what a helpful range of speeds is, is somewhere between about 1.4 times and 2.7 times, depending on the speaker. Um, if it's something I'm very familiar with and I'm not really too worried about, and, and I, I know that I know most of the content already, then I'll skip, kind of skip through it a bit at maybe 2.3 times speed. For most things where there's a lot of new content coming in, I'll listen normally at 1.7 to 1.9 times speed, and then I'll take a pause to take notes on the video when I feel like I need to do that. So that's my strategy for listening to these videos. Um, and then when I take these notes, I focus on the things that I think are important to remember that I would not remember had I not taken those notes and that I would like to revisit at some point. And I do revisit these. As an example, when I took the Solutions Architect professional exam last weekend, I revisited my notes um, the few hours before the exam. Um, I spent about three hours going over all of the notes that I had taken and uh, just reading these notes and searching the documentation and other resources for, for any advice that was um, potentially helpful um, from the notes that I'd taken where I may have had points of confusion or little asterisks that I'd drawn saying, I need to look into this a bit more. So that's that's what the, the notes, uh, the purpose that they serve for me. It did take a, a couple of hours to go through. That's how many I had taken. Uh, but this was because it was a very in-depth course with lots of lots of lots and lots of interesting content. Um, Sometimes the content will be a bit more sparse, less less of a, a dense packed um, set of very uh, thorough information. Maybe it's just talking in a broad overview of, a, overview of a service. And in that case, you probably don't need to take as many notes on it. Um, some people do just fine just memorizing. Um, but personally, I would say that taking notes is a, a good strategy. You don't wanna overcomplicate it though. Um, 
I find that if you overcomplicate your note-taking strategy or anything else around the sort of the meta study um, in terms of, you know, studying about how to study, like how do you improve your, your productivity and your, your ability to retain information and so on, it is a good thing to optimize to an extent, but if you spend too much time doing this, it can actually become a form of procrastination. Um, and uh, some evidence for that, I think, is when you see people writing very nice headings, very nice diagrams to describe all this information, um, and it takes them three times as long as if they had have just done some chicken scratches. Um, I try and make my notes legible by me, and I don't really worry too much about whether someone else could necessarily read them. Um, I wouldn't say they're messy, but they're they're definitely not uh, beautifully presented or anything like that. Um, if you're if you're making content that you want somebody else to look at, um, like if you're teaching someone, then by all means, make your notes beautiful uh, because you're, you're trying to convey that information. But for me, this is just notes that I'm taking for myself. Uh, therefore, I see no reason to, to spend too much time on them. I'd rather spend extra time, if I had extra time, um, focusing on learning more content, going deeper with the existing content and so on. So that's pretty much all I have to say about note taking. There is one other thing I'd like to bring up, which is something I haven't used for the AWS exam so much, but I have used in the past when I was learning French. Um, it is somewhat targeted towards language learning, but you can really use it for anything. Um, and that is using electronic flashcards. Now you might say, what's wrong with uh, paper flashcards? And I'll tell you, there's a big problem with, with paper flashcards. You don't know when you want to see them um, because unless you have a very intricate system for I've seen this flashcard before, I'm good with this one, I'm gonna put this in this pile, I'm gonna put this one in this pile. It's too much to maintain, uh, it's better to have a system that manages this for you. And that system, I know it sounds like I'm about to plug a sponsor here, but trust me, I do not have sponsors. Uh, you've seen the number of subscribers I've got on this channel. Um, that system is called Anki. So Anki is a brilliant flashcard program. Its user interface is probably the number one thing holding it back from being extremely well known um, because it is, I find it fine to use, but I have tried to introduce it to other people who aren't necessarily um, uh, sort of in the IT industry or who, who aren't so good with like more difficult to use programs and they, they find that they'd rather use something that's easy to use but less powerful. Um, but you guys are doing AWS and AWS is pretty much the same position, right? So AWS is uh, not necessarily the nicest console in the world, but it can get things done. It's like Lego. So same thing with Anki. It's a very, very powerful flashcard program um, and it's designed for space repetition. So what that means is it will show you a flashcard. Um, if, then you tell it, you try and memorize, you try and remember what was on the other side of the flashcard and then you tell it how well you went recalling it. And so if you went badly at recalling it, it'll show you that flashcard again very soon. Um, and if you went better, then it will continue to space this out. So it might go one day before it shows you and then it'll go another three days and then seven days and then a month and then so on. Um, and the idea is that eventually you're gonna commit this to long-term memory and you're never gonna forget it. So that's what I did with a lot of the uh, vocabulary for, for French. And that has uh, served me well. So I would suggest the same thing for AWS is maybe something you might wanna look into. I would provide a word of caution there, which is that you probably don't want to memorize stats and figures so much. Um, number one, they're liable to change. And number two, they're not really so important either for the exam or in real life. Um, for example, if you're trying to memorize the maximum size of an object in an S3 bucket is five terabytes, I can't really see how that would help that much. What's probably good to know is that it's in the terabyte range and that it's not 500 terabytes and it's not five gigabytes but uh, you don't need to know the exact figure, basically. Um, actually, I do think the that's a, it's a funny example because this Lotions Architect Associate exam, I think one of the questions may be exactly what is what is that? So I may be contradicting myself there, uh, but in general, you don't want to memorize numbers. Um, you want to memorize um, the the important factors that, that sort of all come into play as you practice with this. So, so flashcards um, can be a way to commit that to memory, but it's only a part of the solution. It's not everything. So one thing that I might suggest might be a good thing to make as a flashcard is the five pillars of the well-architected framework, for example. Uh, it'd be more at the associate level, you'd be asked something like that. Maybe the, the six R's of cloud migration, that kind of thing. Um, and then maybe definitions for each of them, et cetera. So there's, there's plenty of uh, potential to use this. Um, it's just an idea of, I've had. I haven't used it personally, but I'll probably be looking into it for the next exams that I do. Um, and that's pretty much all I want to say about note-taking. If anyone has any note-taking strategies, please feel free to leave them in the comments. I'd like to see. I'm always open to trying new things. And uh, thank you for watching everybody. Please remember to give this video a like if you like the video. Subscribe to the channel if you want to see more content like this and uh, have a great day, guys. Um, catch you guys later.